taking care of some exhaust problems with a gas fired um, clothes dryer. Unusually, everybody think, what am I doing with a clothes dryer? It's not air conditioning. But it has to do with airflow and it has to do with dangerous gases, carbon monoxide, uh, CO2. We don't consider CO2 as a dangerous, but at high enough levels, it's a dangerous gas. In this situation, uh, they used some flex duct that had many 90 bends in it and it was drooping and it was filling with lint. And then their eventual, when they got burnt out the other dryer, they just disconnected it from the vents that came from the back of the house and dumped the burning exhaust gas into the house, into the living space. Uh, that's a great idea, isn't it? So I'm going to be replacing the existing old thin aluminum foil type flexi duct that they were using as exhaust gas um, plenum or ducting to get rid of hot, burnt, spent gas. And replacing it with galvanized stainless. Uh, one thing I do, a little extra, the little gap right here, I literally fill that with duct sealant before I put it together. So when I join these two pieces together, it's literally airtight on the back side and the front side because this lip right here will slip into this lip down in here that is totally filled up with sealant and it'll become airtight from the back side, inside and front side. And it'll be something like this. And then when it gets installed, coming through and coming out of that wall right there, uh, it will get installed with the seam facing upwards because you may get condensation and water in there and you don't want it to build up on your seam and rust out, rust out after 20 years. Uh, it may rust out anyway, but not having a broken seam down traveling at all that can condensate water, keep your seam up high. When you put your ducting together, you do not use screws to put the ends of your ducting together because when the screws when a screw goes through, a screw goes through like this, and say you have half inch screws sticking out. Well, what do you think happens with that fine lint? The lint will stick on the ends of the screws and start forming like a clogged artery in a heart. If you ever seen cholesterol and a picture of a clogged artery, well, that's what will happen to the lint. It'll hit the tips of the screws and start building up and it causes clogs and flow restriction. Another problem is there's line lengths and elbow lengths. Every time you put a 90 degree elbow, you reduce the flow. And for example, on this particular manufacturer, straight flow with no elbows, 80 feet. You put 190, you're down to 68 feet. You put 290s, you're down to, I think it was 48 feet. You put 390s and you're down to something like 36 feet of ducting that you're limited to. This system had 490s on it with flex duct that was like this underneath the house and uh, it was that's what caused the old, old burner on the old system to burn out and um, one of the many reasons and it would take two to two and a half hours to dry clothes the, the energy bill was an astronomical by just using gas trying to dry clothes through that so airtight sealant up no screws and um, That'll be one of the little things. We're going to use a mammometer, uh, and we're actually going to measure the back pressure on the system that goes in because on this particular manufacturer unit, they recommend not having any more than 0 0.83 inches of water column as back pressure caused by your ducting. And you have to keep the airflow. The reason you just don't put any size ducting on there, you never downsize for one thing because you get massive back pressure and you'll have higher energy bills, longer drying times. Another problem is you never go too far too big. So you don't put like eight or 10 inches ducting on here just because it's available under there from something else because your velocity of airflow goes down. And when your velocity of airflow goes down, this is like refrigeration and air conditioning, getting oil return back to your compressor. You wanna keep your face velocity of your airflow of your refrigerant and your mass up to keep the oil in suspension and going along with your refrigerant flow. In ducting for a dryer, you wanna keep the little particles of dust and lint 
in suspension by high velocity 1200 foot a minute dust uh, airflow going through there this way the dust doesn't drop out of suspension and start clinging to the inside and building up inside your your ductwork so you don't get clogs and you can keep high flow velocity and dry your clothes faster and have a lower energy bill uh, another thing you want your ducting for a dryer not to be level but like oil return on a refrigeration line, if you're doing cooling only, you want it slightly tilted downwards so you have a downward flow. Think of you want oil to travel back to the compressor. So there's instances, depending on how you want the, tr what direction and how you want the oil to flow, the same thing for dust. So you have to do the same thing. A slight downward pitch, not too big, not too small, no screws through. Uh, as few as 90s as you probably I'm I might have two 45s in this and they're gonna be long radius 45s and when you do use flex you use gas rated flu flex you don't use that aluminum tin foily kind of stuff they sell in Home Depot and stuff to hook up dryers you do not use that that's another thing there'll be more to this video but that's little tidbits of information. You're using your knowledge from airflow from HVAC and your knowledge of refrigerant flow and oil return to make sure the lint doesn't build up inside your ductwork, reducing your airflow to get out from your dryer when you're having very long duct runs, when you're having very long refrigerant runs and you have an oil flow problem. You use that knowledge, that physics, what you've learned for something as simple as doing your dryer for your clothes next video